You have a book on naturally quitting smoking, and which applies to other addictions that you mentioned as well. What makes, first of all, these addictions so strong and so hard to, to stop for people? Well, I mean, there's two angles of it. One is the actual physical part of the addiction, which is when you start needing it, there's something in the body going, I gotta have it, I gotta have it. The way I look at it is that, because the one I've worked with the most is nicotine. And there's nicotine receptor sites in the brain, and they're going, give me nicotine, give me nicotine, and it gets louder and louder as it grows. And then finally, they, you know, they have to do it. And then um, there's a little technology called the alpha stim that hooks up to the ears, puts the teeniest, tiniest little microelectric current into the brain with sophisticated waveforms. It's very relaxing, so much so that the military is their biggest customer. And it was rumored that maybe it works for addiction, but the company's not allowed to say what it knows because of FDA in our free country. And, uh, but I bought it based on the rumor, thinking wouldn't it be cool if it worked? Yeah. And I put it on my desk and, uh, and would hook up patients coming in, they're anxious, they're depressed. Uh, and I was really pleasantly surprised, even blown away by how well it worked. Mm -hmm. And then after a year and a half of putting this on a lot of patients every day almost. Um, uh, maybe a 30-ish year old gal came in, wanted to get off a of methamphetamine today after four years, could I help her? And it worked like a charm. Now she was motivated, but it worked. So then after I saw that it worked, I thought, oh wow, well let's check it out on cigarette smokers. So do you smoke cigarettes? Yes. Do you want one now? Yes. Can I hook you up just for fun to see what happens? Okay. And then two minutes later, the craving's gone pretty much every time. Mm. So it's like the nicotine receptor sites that are going, give me nicotine, give me nicotine. The microcurrent into the brain affects the field in such a way that it goes, never mind. Mm. They're just. And then a 20 minute treatment keeps it away for maybe eight hours. Mm. So they have to use the device a few times a day for a week or two or three. But then even in the absence of the craving, there's like a sub-personality in the mind. Mm -hmm. We all have different sub-personalities and we bounce uncontrollably from part to part. That's the disease of humanity. Mm -hmm. You know, in one situation you're like that and another yeah. like that. And so in a smoker, one of the parts is the smoker. When you bounce into the smoker, I'm a cigarette, I'm a smoker, let's have a cigarette. What's the problem? Mm -hmm. But then there's a part that wants to quit and then uh, they fight it out and the smoker eventually wins. Even if the part that wants to quit gets the upper hand, then uh, the craving grows and grows and grows and the smoker comes to the rescue. Mm. So the smoker, the inner smoker, the subpersonality, has two different reputations. Has a bad reputation, it's the smoker. Has the great reputation, it's the heroic rescuer saving you from the horrible craving. Mm. Well, the device, the alpha stim, takes away the need for the smoker as the heroic rescuer. But even in the absence of the craving, the smoker still can want a cigarette. So the person has to remember that they don't want a cigarette. But, the, but we're bouncing, the thing that bounces from part to part, I call it the aspect of consciousness that you think of as yourself. I don't have a shorter way to say it. But whatever that bounces into, so it bounces into the part that wants to quit, and then, uh, you know, I want to quit. But then also there's a, a hole with a W, bigger than the parts and bigger than the sum of the parts, that's the real you, mm -hmm. that as a small child, even the most loving parents still have to teach you, you can't do that, you can't say that, you can't think that. All things coming from the spontaneous wholeness of the child. So two things happen. That's how the parts start to develop, and the hole that should be running the show gets knocked off, it's down masquerading as a part. And then the aspect of consciousness that you think of as yourself will come across the whole on a regular basis, but we run away because we don't trust ourselves. Now usually in some kind of a therapy, even if people use different terms for talking about these things, when you, the closer you try and look at any aspect of the mind, the slipperier it gets, right? Mm -hmm. But the way that the inner smoker crystallizes, literally crystallizes in the brain, because the brain's a liquid crystal, most people don't know that. Mm. And, um, but this, the smoker crystallizes in the brain and acts as if it's a separate entity, even though it's not. 
And then in contrast to that, the whole, assuming that the whole really wants to quit, which in many cases it does, mm -hmm. then the turns out that the part that wants to quit really is the whole masquerading as the part. But most people don't have a clue that that's the case. And even if they did, even if they go, yeah, I really want to quit, I totally want to quit. And they can say that truthfully even though the part is still there. Because the whole is bigger than the parts and bigger than the sum of the parts. So if when the aspect of consciousness that you think of as yourself is together with the whole, then that's the real you. And in those moments, you're mindful. Otherwise, when you're in the part, then you're not mindful. You're unconscious. We won't, you know, maybe mindless is not the <laughs> right term, but, but it's certainly not mindful. But when you're together with the whole, then you're mindful. So if one were to understand as a smoker that they, as a whole they want to quit, and they get the aspect of consciousness together with the whole, yes, I want to quit, then, okay, I declare I'm a non-smoker. And remain mindful I'm a non-smoker. And then if the craving for the cigarette is there, they put on the alpha stim, craving goes away. So my two-step program for quitting cigarettes is step one, mindfully declare because it's what you want, I'm a non-smoker. Step two, if the craving's there, you hook up the alpha stim, goes away. Uh, the cravings completely disappear after a week or two or three of a few times a day. And during that time, you're becoming more and more mindful that you're a non-smoker. Makes it a piece of cake. You know, a lot of people have uh, issues when they try to quit of weight gain. Is it, is it just the craving masking as something else? or And, and do you see that with your, with uh, your procedure? I'm, I'm not seeing that. Okay. I think the... Um, the people are eating to cover up the craving. Mm -hmm. And then with this, the craving's just gone, so there's no need to cover it up. Mm -hmm. Is this a permanent that you've seen uh, after a couple weeks, like you said, seven, eight weeks, or well, something like that? Can it, can it be sustainable? Well, it is, it is sustainable. Uh, now, the issue becomes that, um, that stress can trigger the craving, mm -hmm. okay? So we have conditioned reactions, right? And so a conditioned reaction can trigger the craving, and especially because, uh, well, let's say when the craving grows and grows, stress is associated with the craving. So when stress comes along unrelated to the craving, the craving goes, oh, my friend, stress, and, and you think, oh, I need a cigarette. So it, you have to remain mindful, I'm a non-smoker, now, if the craving spikes, normally, let's say that a, a, somebody realizes they have a craving. And let's just say on a zero to 10 scale of needing a cigarette, maybe something triggers it at a six, I want a cigarette. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but then something happens, you know, somebody comes in the room, the phone rings, they get distracted, and they forget about it. And then they go off into something else and don't have the cigarette. And so some people would say, oh, the, the, the need passed. It goes away after a few minutes. Mm -hmm. But in fact, on the zero to 10 scale, it was a six. If they don't have it then, the next time it comes around, they're a seven or an eight or a nine or a 10. It didn't. But if you're starting from zero because you really did quit, and then some stress happens and the craving spikes, and then if you stay with, look, I'm a non-smoker, I'm not going to have a cigarette, then it will go back to zero.